but we are here for you. We are here for you. Jesus. Here we are today. Can we all just say, have your way. Have your way, Jesus, with your bride today. We love you, Jesus, and we welcome you. Can we say we welcome you? We welcome you. Amen. Lord, Steve, it's great to have you back with us. Praise God. Praise God. Good to have him back. And so many others I see who have been out sick or recovering or different things. Praise God. Al Schmidt, some of you had heard, had, had uh, fallen and broken his hip. He's doing well, though. He's in Salem and recovery, and uh, they're doing great. And wow, it's just, it's good to see you. I'm seeing some faces I haven't seen before, and I'm also seeing some faces. Don't let it make you nervous. I won't call you out. Well, at least this time. No, I'm kidding. Um, and I see some faces I haven't seen for a while. Welcome, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And as we come and we gather in the house of the Lord, it is our priority as we come to gather in His name. Would you say His name with me? The Lord Jesus. Would you say it again? Jesus. One more time. Jesus. It's an amazing name. It's a powerful name. And we are gathered here together because of all that he has done for our lives and all that he wants to do through our lives. Wow. Praise God. Again, we welcome you if you're visiting. If you're with us online today, we welcome you. I invite you to uh, fill out a guest card you'll find in front of you in the pew or online. You can make contact with us there via email. But uh, it is, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm expecting great things because of His great name. Amen? Amen. Would you take a moment this morning? Would you greet one another? Look for a new face. Maybe introduce yourself or an older face and introduce yourself. Uh, make sure, church, nobody gets missed. Make sure nobody gets missed, and then we'll continue in worship. Done great things. 
And I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things God, you'll do great things Come on, sing it Oh, hero of heaven You conquered the grave Free every captive Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Sing hallelujah. of it all. From 
Just the voices, here we go. your hands to him.
we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. surrounding me, let it break, as your name still, call the sea still.
names can deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Sing his name. So we sing Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. We honor you and worship with lifted hands. There is no one greater than you, O oh God. No one greater than you. Father, we are so thankful this morning. We are so thankful for the good news of Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for the gift of salvation. We are so thankful for eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We are so thankful, O oh God, that you walk with us and you talk with us. That, Lord, you remind us we are your very own. We are so thankful that you are as close as the mention of your name. We are so thankful, Lord, for your presence. For your abiding presence. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, <laughs> We recognize your presence, and Lord, we just rest in your presence, Lord, today. Lord, I pray for every person in this room that, Lord, you would give each one of us, Lord, fresh revelation of who you are. I pray, Lord, for any of us that would be in this room today, Lord, and, and maybe we, we know the word, we know the thoughts, we know the religion, but Lord, we haven't necessarily experienced the reality of Christ, that personal relationship. I pray, Lord Jesus, that today would be the day. We call upon your great name, Jesus, and we say... <laughs> Bring forth new life. Renew us. Renew us, O oh God. Restore to us. Let us walk in the full blessing of our God. In the abundant blessing of our God. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you. Would you just one more time, would you just speak your praise to the Lord? Just tell him how much you love him. Lord, we love you. Lord, we're honored today. It is our privilege to be here together in your presence. Be lifted high. Be exalted. Lord, be glorified this morning in your church. We declare that you are the amazing one. That you are the most high God. That you know all things. You are ever present. You are all powerful. And we worship you, Lord.
say his name one more time? Jesus. Just say it in faith believing. Say it one more time. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He loves us so. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is good. You received as you came in this morning uh, our new scripture, memory scripture for this month, which comes to us out of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. If you'd turn your attention toward the screen, would you read this together with me? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can we do it one more time? One more time. Ready? Either on the card or on the screen. Here we go. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a beautiful promise that we have received here from the Apostle Paul, from the Lord himself through the Apostle Paul. And I just encourage you, such great blessing. Take time, this, read this every day if you would. Uh, take some time, write it down, memorize it, hide God's Word in your heart. And again, we'll be saying it together as we uh, come together this month on Sundays. And uh, great promise for the Holy Spirit to bring back to our thoughts when we're living life here on earth and we find ourselves anxious. Anybody in this room ever found yourself anxious about something? Okay, the rest of you, this is the altar call for you. <laughs> We've all found ourselves at some time or another anxious, and aren't you thankful for that provision? Amen? Amen. I am too. Praise God. I'm so glad that you are here today, and uh, I'm so glad I'm here today. Uh, just exciting. Boy, what a wonderful weekend we had last. I uh, want to appreciate the choir and those that were involved in drama and helping with breakfast and all of that kind of stuff. Um, can we just let them know we appreciate them? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, just uh, so many great things that are happening. I appreciate you this week if you'd be praying for our school. And uh, I got good news for you. We got the uh, final inspection, and the students are in the modular. So that's a praise. Yay! It is kind of funny, though. We got the approval on Friday morning, and. and uh, so, I mean, it was the end of the week, so they got to, and it was only a half day of school on Friday, so they got to just a small segment of time, but it was, as soon as the inspection was done, they're carrying their books and heading back to class over there and excited about that. So, uh, praise God, we are very thankful. He is faithful. Amen. But be praying for the school this week. Uh, this is our week where uh, our school is walking through the process of accreditation. So, um, yes. And uh, so there's a lot of people that are going to be at work. There's a lot of things and meetings and dinners and people coming from out of state. And uh, it's going to be exciting. So please pray for uh, Michelle and pray for our school staff and, uh, and just ask for uh, God's favor uh, to be upon us. He is good. Amen. We're going to ask our ushers if they would come at this time. We're going to wait on you for a morning tithe and offering. God is so good. And how many of you know he wants to bless through you and me? Yes. He does, he does, he does. Father, we're so grateful and we're so thankful for your amazing love. And Lord, what a privilege it is, God, to walk in obedience to your word, Lord, in the tithe. But Lord, also to walk in obedience and offerings, Lord, as you would direct us, God, by your spirit. Lord, we pray that you continue, Lord, just to pour into the laps of your people, Lord, just abundantly pour into your church, Lord, that we can do more than ever before for the advancement of the kingdom of God, for the glory of Jesus. 
So again, Lord, we love you and we worship you now as we receive the tithe and offerings. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. As we're receiving the offering this morning, kids, we're going to let you be dismissed for Children's Church. And if you want to head over this direction here, <coughs> teachers will be there to receive you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Doug Graven, would you please come here? Praise God. Hey, sir, I asked uh, Doug if he would come and, uh, and uh, just give us a little update. I hear that the cafe is open. It is open. The cafe is open. It's open. Well, so, um, as many of you may know, that we did a kitchen remodel yes. last year. And part of that process was it disrupted our coffee cafe area. It was homeless for a period of time. And we didn't have a coffee cafe, which was very sad. <laughs> um, but we now have converted the old kitchen into our Connection Cafe. Yes. Which, um, over the past six weeks, we've been training baristas to make drinks reasonably well. Actually, they're making them really well. Yeah, they are. They're making them really well. They are. Um, so that they can, uh, we have a really great coffee offering. So let me, so we talked about this. The pastor said, you know, it's interesting. We just, um, you know, redid the coffee cafe. We've trained some people to make really good coffees. Why? Why are we doing that? I'm like, that's a really good question. It is. I hadn't really thought about it. Yeah. So. Can you help me out? I can help you out. On okay. That. So, thank you. So we, we <laughs> wanted to think why. So from my perspective, and uh, you know, I have a love of coffee as some yes, people may know. Me too. Right. Exactly. Oh. Do we have any coffee drinkers here today? There we go. I don't need any booze from the tea drinkers because, you know, we offer tea as well, but that's okay. Um, so from my perspective, you know, I've always looked at coffee and, you know, I had a little coffee place downtown for a period of time. And my, my view on coffee has always been it, it breaks down barriers between people. If you invite someone into your home, one of the first things traditionally that happened in many homes is you'd offer them a cup of coffee, right? So it brings down barriers. It, it, it makes people feel comfortable. It you know, rich, poor, old, young, it doesn't matter. You're sitting there sipping a cup of coffee, and it allows you to really connect with people. And so I think as a ministry, I think coffee can be really important to bring that, break down those barriers and to get, allow people to connect and be comfortable like they're in your home, right? So that's sort of how I view it. Is that, that's yes, pretty accurate? That's that is how you accurate. view it. That is how I view it. I do too. I, ex exactly. So from, um, I always felt it was my responsibility before I started, you know, doing coffee professionally, which I did for a period of time. Yes. Um, that I should be able to do it with excellence, right? I should be able to do it as good as I possibly can. So I did a lot of research, and I could burn up the entire hour, if you'd like, talking about coffee, um, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> they're going to get the hook or they're going to mute the microphone. Um, but the quick steps, I'm going to give them the quick steps. This is the cliff note version. That is, you have to start with good building blocks. That is, you have to have really good coffee beans, okay? And they have to be fresh roasted, just like good bread, right? Good bread, you go to the bakery. It's not day-old bread that you're buying. You're buying the fresh bread. Well, coffee beans actually deteriorate at the same rate as fresh baked bread. Just view it that way. So you bake your bread, right? And the bread deteriorates. So day three or day four, unless it's filled with a bunch of preservatives, your bread's not very good. Coffee beans are the same way. Within 12 hours, you, it's, it's the peak. They're as good as they can taste. And then it deteriorates over seven to 10 days and eventually it gets to the sort of steady state, right? Right. So, which doesn't make it bad coffee, it just makes it not as good as it could be. How about that? I don't want to okay. criticize old coffee. I'm just saying that it's not as good or at the peak where it could be. So, what we've done, the, the person that used to do roasting for me at the little coffee place that I had, um, I gave her one of my roasters when they closed the shop, and so she's roasting locally here in Dallas still. Wow. So the coffee that we have there, you can still actually get. It's just, it, we get it from Nancy instead, rather than from the place that was downtown. Um, so anyway, she has started roasting for us, so that we get that fresh roasted coffee. Number two, you gotta have, you gotta, if you're gonna do an espresso drink, you have to steam your milk, milk correctly. That's harder than you think. Um, it's easy to do it badly, but it's much harder to do it good. So we've got some baristas we've trained that can steam milk really well. So then the third thing is, what are you going to put in it? How are you going to flavor your coffee? And you have to select really good products. So once you've got those three things, fresh baked beans. Yes. This is going to be a quiz. Okay. Steam milk. Got really it. Steam your milk really well. Really good flavor. Got it. Right? And then you have to have people who like to drink coffee. That's the best part. So that's what we've done. 
Yes. Now, unprompted, I was at our home Bible study on Monday night, and we're sitting there, and we have actually replaced the brewed coffee as well at the church two weeks ago. Um, and unprompted, um, Jeremy says at the home Bible study, he says, oh my gosh, I don't know what the church has done in the last two weeks, but the coffee's been amazing. And I'm like, I didn't prompt this. I didn't say anything to him. He was not even aware that we did this, right? So we actually have changed out the coffee that we drink with fresh, fresh roasted coffee. We got a really nice grinder that grinds it appropriately, and we got a pulse brewer, which brews it to the best possible ability so you get really good brewed coffee. Coincidentally, our brewed coffee and our espresso will taste probably identical to what we had at Prest. I mean, that place that used to be downtown, because it's all the same building blocks of what we had there. <laughs> so we are really, effectively, have a really amazing coffee house now, and what we serve. So let me ask you, so why are we, why are we pressing in to give the best coffee? What's our main purpose? I think that when you invite someone into your home, you know, you've got the I can't say, I shouldn't say brand names. I'm not going to criticize other brand names. You might have some canned coffee. How about we say that? That's already been roasted and ground about six months ago, right? So you've got that one. And then you've got this bag of coffee you bought a couple days earlier from a coffee roaster, and you're going to grind it. You're going to brew it right then. When you have a guest in your home, which one are you going to pick? You're probably going to pick the really good one that's on the shelf. That's what I would pick. Yeah. Unless I come to your house and you may do that just to tease right, me. Right, because you're hospitable. Exactly. Right. Because you're hospitable. And you want to actually treat them. Right? So as we have, you know, the goal of coffee here from my perspective, again, this is a, it's, it's not just about what we like to drink, but it's about what can we do for our guests that are visiting us as well. Yeah. yeah. Right? We want, do we want to offer them, I'm going to say church coffee. That doesn't... That has a negative connotation, right? but I, don't, I shouldn't say that. Um, we don't want to. We want to offer them the best that we are able to offer. How about that? Um, and if someone comes in as a visitor, we would love to be able to give them a really good coffee. I'd love for them to say, "Wow, I'm not going to get coffee before church on Sunday. I'm going to go to the church and get it. This is really good." Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's a blessing. So, there we go. There we go. That's Cafe. coffee. Now I have a lot more stories about coffee, but I'm pretty sure my time is up. Um, so you can always pull me aside separately, and uh, I've got some great stories about that. We were we were going to have fun, and uh, we're going to pull it all. I was kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pull it all out here and do a demonstration for you, right? Feel like you're at the Oregon State Fair, <laughs> something of that nature. Let me just let me just add to that a little bit. Uh, the focus for us here is not to glorify coffee. It's the focus of we believe with all of our heart that this place is going to fill up and it's going to overflow. And there are people that are coming from all different walks of life, right? And when, when they come into this place, and I've already heard this multiple times this week, there are people who come in and who are becoming a part of this fellowship because when they come in, they're warmly received. And we're basically just letting people know, we're honoring people, and we're saying, you're important. You're important, and we want you to be here. And so, well, we just encourage you again to stop by the cafe and, uh, and bring people, you bring new ones in, take them, down to the, take them down to the cafe, get them a cup of coffee. Uh, you see someone new come in, why don't you introduce yourself and take them down? It's a moment to connect. You'll notice that there's some additional seating that's put, put down there. Uh, pretty soon we'll be having one of the rooms that will be open there too to help with our cafeteria uh, for food and things of that nature. Um, but our name is Connection Cafe. So our purpose is... You know, this is to connect. actually, could you get right back That's here right, on my shoulder? Thing. That just, like that, nice that cup feels of coffee? really good. <laughs> they're actually going to, they're going to serve coffee for a little bit after church today. Okay. Which we, we don't normally do so that if people want to go back and try it now, this is a great time to do it. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect, perfect. Connection Cafe. We have lots of thoughts and ideas, things that we're dreaming about, but, uh, and I'll just throw a few of those out there because we're preparing. How many of you know we can all create new friends, right? Enter into relationship. We need to engage other people. So our plan is on Sundays and Wednesdays prior to the services or our classes is to have coffee available. And again, that will expand as we move forward. How many of you know we have an incredible commercial kitchen that we've been given? Our goal is also this. We want that to be available for us as a church. We got to grow closer together even as we grow larger, right? 
So we want to provide those opportunities. I would love to see as we move forward, I'd love to see at least one Sunday a month have a meal that is prepared that we can just stay after church and connect and fellowship and and just have some really awesome times together. Not just, you know, growing past the high or the how are you, to actually, I know about you, you know about me, we have relationship, and isn't God good? Amen? Yay. Amen. So as you can tell, one thing I think is really cool too, four different couples that have been trained uh, back there, and uh, I just want to say thank you again for volunteering uh, to be a part. But let's remember, as we continue to see new faces come in, as we continue to have opportunity, because we're going to be going out into the highways and the byways, uh, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to be hearing about some different opportunities for us to go, right? To go. And we're excited about that. But as we build relationships and as people come to Christ, we want to connect them into the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So thank you. Pray for the hospitality of the church. Amen? How many of you know that's a ministry mentioned in the Bible? Hospitality being given. Praise the Lord. Would you take your Bibles this morning and would you please turn to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Book of Philippians chapter 2. Oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I hear the sun, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. My heart will sing how great is our God. Father, we thank you for this time we have together in your word this morning. Lord, there is no doubt in my heart at all that, Lord, you have spoken and you have given me a direction, Lord, this morning. And I pray, God, that your anointing would rest, Lord, upon myself, Lord, upon the word as it goes forth, and Lord, upon all of us, uh, Lord, as your people, as a congregation, that, God, we might hear what your Spirit is saying today to us. And we're so thankful (laughs) that, Lord, that that you would speak to us today is life-giving. So, Lord, be honored, be glorified. In this place, above all of our lives, we pray. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. I'd like to read together as a congregation, Philippians, uh, again, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. If you would read together with me, God elevated, exalted Jesus to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, I pictured this much differently. So I want everybody to put on your strong voice. And I want you to think about we're declaring the Scripture, which is powerful, right? So I want strong voices to do it one more time again. Just, wow, it's a powerful word. One more time. God elevated, exalted Jesus to the place of highest honor and gave Him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory. <coughs> Paul gives us beautiful expression and a beautiful truth here, reminding us that there is a name that is above every other name. And we've been speaking that name this morning. The name is Jesus. It is Jesus. As we look at this portion of Scripture this morning, we are reminded that Jesus' name is significant. Jesus' name is powerful. In fact, it is the name that is above every other name. We see it in Scripture. Another way to phrase this for you and me would be this, that the name of Jesus is superior the name of Jesus is greater. The name of Jesus is more powerful than any other name in this world. And you might ask why. It is because he is God. He's God. Jesus is Lord. You'll remember in the Gospel of Luke, I believe it's about chapter 10, there's a story that takes place and the Scripture tells us that Jesus chose 70 to go out. He was sending them out two by two. And they were to go to the towns and the villages that Jesus was going to visit. And he told them to go out and he said to them, the harvest is great. The laborers are few, so I'm sending you out. Go and heal the sick is what the scripture says. Go and say that the kingdom of God has come near to you. How many of you know that's Jesus' desire for his church? Right? He's desiring for us to go out, to go forth. He has sent us. He's called us. He's commissioned us. He's given us His Holy Spirit to empower us again that we might be effective in bringing glory to the name of God. When you drop down in this chapter, they, they went out and then they came back and this was their report in verse 17, they returned, the scripture says, with joy, with great joy. And they said, Lord, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. In your name. Another translation would read, the demons are a subordinate to us through your name name, the name that we utter. As you look here at this word name and you look at the Greek, the Greek carries with it uh, this sense of authority. It, it, it is defined as a name, but it's this, this sense of like when, you're, when you speak the name, when you go in the name, when you act in the name, you have been given authority, right, over, and with Jesus, supremacy, all things. All things. Authority. Jesus had sent them out with authority. And again, the demons had to submit to the name of Jesus. They commanded them to come out. And they came out in Jesus' name. Jesus gave them authority. Jesus gave them his name. His name. His name. His name. Say his name again. Jesus. It's a powerful name. 
I can't tell you the number of times in my life where I've invoked the name Jesus. I've been walking through my day or I've been walking through life. I remember times when I've been home and I couldn't sleep at night and I knew nothing other than just to speak the name of Jesus. I remember times where I found myself anxious or overwhelmed and all I knew to do was just speak the powerful name of Jesus. Speaking his name in faith which was a welcome to his presence, a welcome to his provision, a welcome to his power in and through my life. The name of Jesus, the Son of God, church, we need to understand. And in this day and hour, it is of utmost importance that we know the name of Jesus is a powerful name. It is the name above all names. Jesus spoke about it. He taught about it to his disciples. You find as you read through the gospel in the different, in, different instances, Jesus would say, in my name. In my name. Let me remind you of a few of those. In John chapter 14, verse 13, Jesus said to his followers, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Did you notice that in that scripture, Jesus said it twice in my name? In my name. There's emphasis that's added in the Word of God. This is an important thing that we, His followers, His disciples, understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. It is important that you and I understand that we have been given an invitation to come and to ask anything in his name. That's Bible. Power in the name of Jesus. Again, you go back to the scripture and you look, you move from John 14 to John 16, and we read these words. <laughs> that God would, uh, would give them what they ask of the Father in my name. In my name. Most assuredly, Scripture says, I say to you, Jesus' words, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have, not, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Again, another verse of Scripture listed twice in my name. Church, I would say this. I don't think that we speak his name enough. I don't think that we call upon his name enough in faith. It's so easy to get busy and to get occupied with life. It's so easy for us to get our, lives, our, our focus on, on other things, our situations, our circumstances, our needs, things we're trying to figure out. But how many times do we stop and bring that invitation? How many times do we welcome the presence of God by saying, Jesus, I need your power. Jesus, I need your strength. In your name, Lord Jesus, would you heal my child? In your name, Lord Jesus, would you help me in this area? In your name, Lord Jesus, would you help us to reach the community of Dallas? In your great name. Great name. The name above all Names. Jesus gave his name to his disciples so that at any point in time, as they carried on his work and his mission, as they were living life, they could call upon the great and the powerful and the supreme name of God. His presence and power available at all times. Say his name again. Jesus. It's not just any name. It's not just an ordinary name. It's the powerful name of the Son of God who will make all the difference in how we live our life and how effective we are in fulfilling his purpose and plan for you and for me and even the church. 
Church, we must realize that anything that we're called to do, anything that God has called us individually to do, whether it's in our vocation, whether it's in our family, whether it's just in the activities of life, we should be doing everything in the name of Jesus. For if we're doing it in our own strength, there's never going to be enough. We're never going to be as successful as God wants us to be without us remembering and recognizing it's all in the name of Jesus. You remember in the scripture we read in Philippians, God highly exalted Jesus and gave him the name which is above every other name. His name is supreme. Listen to Paul's writings in Ephesians 1.20. God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come. Okay, get this here. This is such a good point. The name above all names. Jesus' name is above all names. Anything that you can put a name to, Jesus is greater. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. Anything that you can name, Jesus is greater. <coughs> you think your marriage is hopeless? Jesus' name is greater. His power and ability to heal, far greater than your need. Your finances turn totally upside down, Jesus is greater. You're dealing with a sickness or a disease. Come on, church. Come on, church. We get so scared today with the big C word, right? Cancer. How many of you know Jesus' name is greater than cancer? I'm not trying to manipulate you into anything this morning, but the church needs to come and begin to think and move and act in a different, in a higher place. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. His name is above every other name. When you see your child walking in rebellion and you're, you're at a loss and you don't know what to do, let your faith be built as you call on the name of Jesus. Have you ever had those moments we read about them in Scripture. I've experienced in my life, God, I'm not leaving from this place till you bless me. His name is above every other name. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. It is so important, my friends, in the day that you and I are living, that we be a people of faith, that you and I call upon, we cry out to, that we exalt the name of Jesus Christ, for he is greater. Why is it that the church, even throughout history, when it was suffering some of its greatest persecution, why was there such joy in the church and such celebration? Because Jesus' name was greater Amen. than anything that they would face. There are some of us who have come to places of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And please don't receive this as a, a this isn't like a, not a put down, not meant like that at all. But just to, again, give us an example or a picture. Some of us who are believers in Christ were so afraid of death. What? Jesus overcame death in the grave for you and me. We don't have to fear death. Oh, it's Paul's focus to live as Christ, to die as gain. Woohoo! I don't have to look at death in a negative way. Death is a transition for me into the very presence of God. I'm going to heaven. Do you know how many people in our community need to have hope of heaven? Do you know how many people right now are on their deathbeds and need to hear the good word of the Lord? They need to hear about the name of Jesus. They can forgive them of their sins no matter what they've done. They need to hear about his power and his ability to save. 
his power and ability to transform. The name of Jesus is above every other name. Whatever has a name is inferior to the power and the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it makes us think differently when we're going to go to prayer. When we're going to pray for the prodigal or those that maybe have strayed from the Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, I lift up my son. I lift up my daughter. Father, I lift up my uncle. Father, in Jesus' name, God, move heaven and earth. God, do whatever it takes to bring them to a place of your saving grace. Whatever it takes. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. I want to mention to you just some things concerning the name of Jesus. Things that we need to be reminded of. Things that we need to know. Things that lead us in how we respond to the person of Jesus Christ and his great name. How many of you know we are commanded in scripture to honor his name? In fact, another word that we would receive would be glorify. You'll read that in the scripture. Glorify the name of the Lord. We go to the Lord's Prayer. We read about it. Jesus instructing them how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, honor be unto you, O God. It is right My friends, again, with this foundation, this thought, and this focus of Jesus being the name that is above all names, it is right and it is fitting that you and I honor Jesus. Scripture tells us that the Father and the Son are one. My friends, we need to think about it. I don't think that we need to become legalistic. The thing I think is so funny sometimes for us as Christians, and we've all done it, right, is we expect the believer, the unbeliever, to act like a Christian, when they're an unbeliever. Right? Somebody's on the job and somebody uses some foul language or they take the Lord's name in vain, right? And it's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's whatever else. Well, they don't have any understanding. They have no relationship, right? For them, there's not really any meaning behind that. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. But for you and I who do know Jesus Christ, and you and I who do know that he is the Son of God, we should walk in honor towards him in all ways as as you and I live our lives. We should not call on his name in vain. We shouldn't misuse his name. We shouldn't use his name for evil purposes or be thoughtless or lighthearted with it. After all, he is God. Right? But we should love him. And know this, the scripture tells us, to walk in the fear of the Lord. But also to walk in the love and the grace and the mercy of God. My friends, the name of Jesus should be honored. Also, we need to remember that there is no other name from which or by which men can be saved. Only the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. The world would love to proclaim today, and they are saying it all about, right? You can come to God however you want to. Did you know that the majority of people round about us believe that anybody that dies is going to heaven? And it isn't true. We're not called to preach the message of condemnation. We're called to preach the message of salvation. We're called to preach the good news. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came that through him the world might be saved. And that's what we're to be about. But church, we must know salvation and the gift of eternal life comes from no other name but only the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, listen to the scripture. Listen to the scripture. If you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Powerful name. Listen to the scripture. As many as received Jesus to them, he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believed in his name. 
name. Scripture, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, you have life in his name. Challenge you to look through the Scripture and see how many times you see the name of Christ referred to. The name that is above every other name. My friends, you and I are supposed to be preaching in the name of Jesus. There's some good instruction and evaluation for us as we examine our own hearts and lives or as we submit ourselves to other people and even their teaching. Is it promoting Jesus or is it promoting me? See, there's no transition and no power. There's no, if I'm preaching myself, oh, I feel sorry for you. And for our world and for our community, if we're preaching ourself, oh Lord, my heart breaks. For the power is in the person and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to preach in the name of Jesus. Now you remember some of these stories as we begin to look in the, in the book of Acts and follow the New Testament church. There's the healing of this lame man that was at the gate called Beautiful. And you remember in the story that the apostles had come and, and this is like the first miracle that we read after Pentecost. And again, they come to him, they speak to him, they give what they have, which is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. They were preaching in the name of Jesus. And what happened? He rose up and he walked. What's interesting about this, and I don't know if you caught this in your study, but it definitely has piqued my curiosity or, or my focus. So what happens? Peter and John are from that experience, right? They're arrested. They're brought in before the religious leaders, right? And they're, they're being tested or whatever else. But you'll find two different places in Scripture where the apostles are told, right, by these religious leaders and those that are there, okay, we're going to let you go, but stop preaching Jesus' name. How are they going to bring good news to the world? How are people's lives going to be changed? How are people's lives going to be transformed? It's only by the name of Jesus. It's only by the power that is in that name. The Jewish council, oh my goodness, they would beat the apostles and they would command them, don't speak in Jesus' name. Don't preach in Jesus' name. But they knew that the power was in Jesus' name for lives to be made whole. Jesus' name. Church, we need to become confident of that. Right? Didn't Jesus tell us in the Great Commission as we would go forth and as we would preach in Jesus' name, what's going to happen? We preach Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's going to work with us, right? Men are going to be saved. Lives are going to be transformed. Jesus is going to be glorified. But as we speak the name of Jesus, incredible things happen. Why? Because it's a powerful name. Philip. Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and he preached, the scripture says, in the name of Jesus Christ. He preached in his name. Barnabas testified that Paul, after his conversion, preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. See, sometimes we can get confused, church, and we can think that the power comes with the eloquence of our speech and our delivery. The power comes with our giftedness and our... Church, we will never be as effective as God desires us to be. We will never fulfill our destiny in Him if we do it in our own power and strength. Jesus said, I will be with you even unto the ends of the earth. Jesus gave his followers, his disciples, he gave them his name, which was his authority to go forth and continue and do the works that Jesus did. What did Jesus come to do? He came to bring salvation. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. 
He came to set men free. He came to open blinded eyes. He came to heal people. He came to give people hope and a future. Jesus' name is powerful. Believers, as believers, when we come and we gather together, another point for you, we're supposed to gather in Jesus' name. Gather in Jesus' name. The scripture, where two or three are gathered together in his name. Bringing that out to you. I want you, I want you to see this everywhere you read in scripture. Where two or three are gathered in his name. In his name, he is there in the midst of them. So what happens when you and I come together on a Sunday morning or we come together in a small group or we come together in a class somewhere or whatever else and we're pressing in to come and to worship and exalt the Lord as we gather in his name, you and I can anticipate and expect his presence to be among us, which means we can come with great expectation. In his name. I think sometimes, and it's easy to do, I've been there, I've done it. But we'll come when we gather together and we forget about the priority of our focus and, and, and that really Jesus is the one that enables us to come together. Jesus is the one that, again, is the center of our fellowship. He's the head, we're the body. When we come with that fix and with that focus, See, even as a church, we could get mixed up if, if our evangelistic efforts and going out into our community are all about making Valley Life Center know. We don't need to go and make Valley Life Center known. We need to go forth and preach Jesus. We need to go forth and share Jesus. We need to come together and gather together in Jesus' name. And what takes place in our lives and in our church or in our small groups will be dynamic. Life-changing. Gathering in his name. When we gather in his name, my friends, we're gathering under his authority. And we can anticipate great things. Miracles. Healing. Healing. We see all of these things are done in the scripture. We see it again in his name. In his name. All manners of miracles. We look down through the scripture. I love going through the book of Mark because there's so many different miracles we read about in the gospel of Mark. And it's just, it's fun to reflect upon those. But again, we, we see in the scripture Jesus speaking about those who work miracles In his name. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus says, In his name, those who believe shall lay hands on the sick, and guess what? They will be well. Right? The name, the name of Jesus. Demons are cast out by the name. Honestly, I know sometimes when we talk about or say the word like devil or demon, Sometimes we can get a little nervous. But I want to remind you, the name of Jesus is greater. Jesus is more powerful. We have nothing to fear in Christ. And we see over and over in Scripture, Paul He commanded a spirit of divination to come out of this girl. And he commanded the demon to come out in Jesus' name. The scripture talks about binding and loosing. We again, just reminding you of scripture we had read earlier in the beginning. Jesus sending out his disciples and he gave them authority. The authority was in his name and as they acted, again, people were set free. Supernatural protection is available to you and me in the name of Jesus. You ever had a moment in your life where you felt threatened, something was in and about you and, or, or happening around about and you felt like you were in danger, oh Jesus, calling out his name in faith, calling upon him in behalf of Your need. I love this scripture. It brings a whole new light when we think about the name of Jesus. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong 
tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. You know the number of stories from missionaries who've been overseas preaching in Jesus' name and found themselves in horrific situations or threatening situations, but they put their faith in God and they would call upon the Lord Jesus Christ in his hand of deliverance or blessing or safety that was brought. I remember as a kid, my mom, um, my mom was a prayer warrior. She prayed a lot. And I know she prayed for the missionaries in our church. And I remember there were moments and times where God would burden her heart to go to prayer on behalf of different ones. And it would be like a day or so later as she'd try to, you know, find out maybe what was going on, that she would discover there was some dangerous activity or something that was taking place that was threatening them. But God had laid it on her heart to be praying as well as they were calling out to Jesus for his salvation. And God would meet. There's power in the name of Jesus. There have been times I've found myself in situations where I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say, but I would call upon the powerful name of Jesus. Jesus, help me. Do you recognize that as we call his name, we're exercising faith? We're exercising faith. Even when we bring expression to the Lord and say, God, help my faith. <laughs> Lord, I got little faith. Help me. Did you know that's an exercise of faith? We're turning our focus and attention to the power and to the person whose name we worship. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ I remind, I remind you that the scripture, the psalm says that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Believe it, church. We can speak and invoke the name of Jesus, no matter what is before us, no matter what's going on round about us. And then we read in Colossians, Paul's words, and whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, whatever you and I are about, whatever we are doing, it should all be about the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ, bringing glory to him. But it should all be in recognition that what we do, we can't do on our own. We need Jesus with us. We need his help. We need his power So we come and we gather on a Sunday morning, or I should say before we gather in here on a Sunday morning, I'll be in my office and I'll be spending time in prayer, sometimes in study. But I recognize with all of my frailty and humanity, without the blessing of the Lord and without the working of His Holy Spirit, and without calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everything good that comes about or comes forth in and through our lives in whatever we're doing, oh, Jesus. Jesus. It's that focus of surrender. It's that focus of recognizing that it's in Jesus' name. That sometimes is the danger that we experience when, when great triumphs happen, when great victory takes place in our life. If we're not careful sometimes, we begin rejoicing in the victory, and that's totally good. It's right. We should do that. But we rejoice in the victory. And then all of a sudden, there's those little thoughts that start coming. You know, I didn't do that bad of a job, did I? Well, that's, hmm. well, I'm glad I'm not like, God, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> God.
God wants to turn this world upside down just like he did when he called the apostles and he sent them out. Not turn it upside down in the negative way, but in the positive way. He wants the world to know him. He wants the world to know his love and his power, his ability to change lives to change circumstances, to heal bodies, to bring salvation, to set us free from things that we've been bound for for years. The name of Jesus. Church, God's calling us to take action. In the name of Jesus, (laughs) he's calling us to wear his name in faith. He's calling us, he's calling you and me to share his name in faith, to believe in his name, to pray in his name, to call upon his name, to heal in his name, to bless in his name. Everything about our lives, doing it all for the glory of God, all in his name. The name above all names. Do you believe it? Is his name above all names? Is there today something in and about your life where maybe you've had questions and you've had doubt? And maybe there's a title for it. Maybe there's a name for it. But you have exalted it above the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know, my friends, go to the Lord. Repent of that thought. Surrender it to the Lordship of Christ. He wants you to know and experience His power in your life. There may be things that we say, and we have to be careful with our words, but I could never do this. I could never be this. I could never become this. I want you to know the name is higher than that name. All other names. (laughs) Would you stand together this morning? The name above all names. What would happen, my friends, if we are living daily for the Lord? If we would begin calling upon, invoking the name of Jesus in all of our activities. God, I'm going down this morning, you know. I'm headed down to go meet so-and-so at the coffee house. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask for your blessing to be upon that conversation. Oh, Lord, I I need to find a vehicle, and this is kind of what I got money-wise. And, and Lord, I really, I don't know that I can get much with that, but I really need something dependable. Jesus, in your name, would you help me with this? Don't you just love the stories as we do that? He's so faithful to lead and to guide, and you walk in and meet with somebody, and they're like, oh, this car was just brought in. Oh, really? And you know, we haven't even put a list price on it. Let me see what we can do for you. Oh, okay. I'm having problems with my children, parenting them. The rebellion, I'm struggling. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you bring order to my house? Lord, in Jesus' name, would you bring order to my life? Lord, there's a... I want you to listen to me, okay? Boy, there's a lot of interesting people that are moving into our community, Lord. Lord, And we're seeing them round about us. Lord, what would you ask of me? Lord, in Jesus' name, help us. Help our community. Help us to walk as Jesus would walk. 
Help us to talk as Jesus would talk. Help us to see opportunities that are around about us. Give us wisdom. Give us power. I know this may stretch some of us way out. I'm just going to say this, though. The things that are before us and that God wants to lead us in this year, they're going to blow our minds. We read about it in the gospel. We see about it in the book of Acts. We see people that are the round about us, and we see mental illness. We see spiritual illness. We see a lot of these different things. But where's the church? Where's the church? Are we speaking the name of Jesus over these lives and over these situations? Every single one of them is precious to Jesus. And we don't have to fear. Because His name's above every other name. His power's greater. If we'll walk in the power that is available to us, the authority that's in Jesus' name, and I'm going to be talking more about that next week, about authority, the authority of the believer. There's some things we need to understand. I won't, I'm not going to preach another message, so be here next week. What would happen if the church just starts rising up in the authority we've been given and we start speaking Preaching, serving, loving in Jesus' name. And the church fills up with testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. And we start running around like all of those other followers of Jesus going, Can you believe what Jesus is doing through our lives? Woohoo! Even the demons obey us. That's exciting. Lives are changed. I pray for my neighbor. They're having a financial problem. Husband's been out of work for six months. He can't find anything. I prayed with him, and he got a call the next day. And now they've invited us over for dinner. They want to know more about this Jesus that we've been talking and praying to. That's the New Testament church. And that's what God's calling us into. So would you declare with me right now, Jesus, your name is above every other name. Jesus, your name is above every other name. We say it again, Lord. Jesus, your name is above every other name. Lord, may your name be glorified. May your name be lifted high. God, I pray that you would increase our faith, the faith of your church, Lord Jesus, that we would let loose of labels. We would let loose of names. We would let loose of bondages in Jesus' name. That, Lord, we would be made whole in Jesus' name. And that we would go forth with your message in Jesus' name. Oh, God, do such a work in and through our lives. Do such a work, Lord, in this community. Do such a work, Lord, in our nation that, Lord, the people will rise up and say, tell us about this Jesus. Can he change my life? And our resounding answer would be, yes, there's power in the name of Jesus. His name is above everything that you are facing. So, Lord, you see our hearts. You know our thoughts. I'm just going to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So, thank you, Jesus. Two calls that I'm going to give, and one is this. If you are here this morning and there is something that you have exalted above the name of Jesus, something you've declared impossible, something you've declared has to be or has to remain, I want you to know his power is greater. And I'm going to ask you just to step out from where you are and just come down here this morning. Just come over here, come down here this morning and I want to pray a prayer. Just pray a prayer. 
Take a step of faith. Say, God, I need you. Lord, I need deliverance from this. God, I need help with this. God, I need power to this. Just come. God wants to set you free today. He wants to set you free today. He wants to set you free today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you are here this morning and you, have, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you too to come down and just to join us here at the front. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you want to know Jesus, if you want to know his life-changing power, if you want to know his forgiveness of your sin and of your mistakes and your failures, if you want to experience that new life that only he can give, just come. Just come and join us down here. Come and join us. Church, start, just start praying. Just start praying in the Spirit. Start praying in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, you're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. I want everyone right now just to continue in prayer for those that have come forward. Those of you that are down front right now, I just want you to begin just speaking the name of Jesus, just speaking it in faith, just inviting him. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming by and just anointing you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's no other name. In the name of Jesus. There's no other name but yours. Jesus. Like yours, Jesus. There's no other name. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, there's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. And there's no other name. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, there's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. yours Jesus like yours Jesus there's no other name there's no other name like yours Jesus like yours Jesus there's no other name there's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. It's going to lead us in a prayer this morning, a prayer of salvation. 
a prayer for those of you that would be accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, whether you're down here or even in the pew. Let this be your expression to the Lord today. Receive him into your heart. He's such a good God, such a loving God. He's a merciful God. And he will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And he will make you, adopt you as his very own son and daughter. Oh, my goodness. Benefits of that. And then I want to pray for everyone down here, a uniform prayer. So just hang with me for just a moment. Would you repeat after me, Heavenly Father? I thank you for your great love and your mercy and grace. I declare this day that I need a Savior. Would you forgive me for my sin? Would you cleanse me and make me new? Would you be my Lord and my Savior? And give to me the gift of salvation and eternal life. I need you. I need your power to transform me. So I give myself to you in Jesus' name. And I want to pray over everyone here. Father, right now, Lord, according to Matthew 18, 18, Lord, I bind every evil spirit that has come against the people of God to deceive, Lord, to lie, to bring doubt, to keep bound. Lord, in Jesus' name, we close every door that's been opened to the enemy and we bind the enemy and say, you have no place. And we declare by the Spirit of God, the name of Jesus Christ, that the church will walk forth victorious in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I release in Jesus' name <laughs> your perfect love into our hearts and lives. I release, Lord, healing power and virtue to our bodies and to our minds. Renew our minds, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would protect us and help us, Lord, to think right thoughts, God thoughts, Jesus thoughts. And Lord, that all the rest of it would fall by the wayside. Lord, I pray that you would hedge us in and that you would protect us. And that, Lord, you would grow us all up in our faith. And that, Lord, you would help us to take hold of that that you've already purchased, that you've already paid the price for. God, I pray for victory in the house of the Lord. So we speak the name Jesus over every circumstance, over every need, over every pain, over every sickness and disease. Lord, we speak the name of Jesus over our brothers and our sisters. We speak the name of Jesus over our prodigals, Lord. We speak the name of Jesus over every Christian that has been hurt, Lord, in a church or in a fellowship. We speak the name of Jesus and we say, Lord, make them whole. Heal them, Lord. Make them whole in Jesus' name. And we declare freedom over the body of Christ. Freedom and liberty to worship you. Freedom and liberty to serve you. Freedom and liberty to become all that you've called us to be. We receive in Jesus' name. Would you say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm just going to continue to keep worshiping the Lord. If you need further prayer, our prayer partners, myself, will be up here.